G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Wednesday evening here in Australia, market up ever so slightly, 2.16 trillion, so I think it was 2.13 trillion, so up about $300 billion. Look, any gain's a good gain, but you know, nothing kind of too exciting, but while Bitcoin, you know, kind of fluctuates, uh, not fluctuates, I mean, it is fluctuating a little bit, but, but while it's somewhat relatively sort of stable, you know, between 47, uh, sorry, 44 and sort of 47,000, some of the altcoins are doing pretty well. BTC dominance risen just a little bit, just over 41%. Volume is down a little bit. And BTC price there, we can see, is $47,157. And gas prices have come way down. Uh, I wonder if that has to do with some of the Arbitrum stuff, and we'll have a look at that very shortly. But, all right, top 100, what's done the best, considering the market is up? Whoa, Hedera, Hashgraph, very nice. 18.63%, Curve, nice, 18%. Bitcoin Cash out of nowhere, making a 15%. XE Cash, Aave, Sushi, Link. So what we can see is a number of DeFi projects are up, actually in some of the top movers at the moment. So we can see down here, uh, Yearn Finance uh, down there. So Compound. So are we going to get another, you know, it's not going to be the DeFi summer because it'll be uh, winter over in the States and that's where they generally go by. Could be a DeFi summer uh, here in Australia, but, you know, we got some coins starting to move and some really nice double digit gains and look even you know some nice single digit gains and any gains a good gain look even engine and you know matic there we go still nearly four percent move so we'll take it but what about losses though what hasn't performed so well in the top 100 algorand so that was doing well for a minute and now we can see it's lost seven percent safe moon <laughs> up and down but just generally sits around that two there harmony down and we can see that solana is down now obviously solana if you didn't already know they turned off for nearly 24 hours uh, no blocks were being made they got uh, the system was flooded uh, and it went down for a while so that may have something to do with the price but it's not just Sol Solana that went down so what we can see is look some some nice gains and hardly any losses really unless you know you're in algo that hurts a little bit and look if you if you're bored at the top any kind of loss generally hurts but no major losses and fair, some fairly nice gains so let's have a quick look at the Bitcoin chart Again, it's still just kind of fluctuating and that's where we're getting these altcoins starting to run a little bit in here. And even with this big dip, things are still looking okay. Again, Bitcoin still sitting above that $42,000 mark, but nothing sort of crazy happening at the moment. Hence why completely possible that we just travel sideways for a while. But equally as possible, we dump or go up. <laughs> the truth is, look, I really don't know where the market's going at the moment. It's very hard to read still believe we are in a bull market so I do believe we'll be going up in the sort of midterm in the short term I'm not so sure we'll just have to wait and see nothing that's coming out and really no big news at the moment that makes me think the market's going to start to go up but sometimes you don't need big news it can just be the most random thing out of nowhere it starts to pump and then also it can start to dump as well but again in the end i'm following this channel we've been in it for so long you know we've been out uh to the top side of it we've been out to the bottom side and we're only just outside it to the bottom side right now all right a couple of interesting stories i want to focus on so solana mainnet is finally back online after almost a day in the dark so it was down for 20 hours so again what i was saying the other night even though solana was the you know the hot thing it's still not a complete project it's still in its sort of beta i mean it's you know much like ethereum a somewhat you know finalized product but not complete and projects like this never should be complete anyway they should have regular updates and things like that but I think they said they can handle up to 400,000 transactions per second uh, and they went down. Apparently it was from uh, bots that were trying to trade on a new uh, platform, i.e. sort of token that was going to be released. I think it was the DEX or something like that on Solana uh, and that broke the Solana machine. So, you know, for all the fanfare that it had, even Solana went down and for a whole day and, you know, if Solana continues to go on to do really good things, 
you know, in five or ten years' time, hardly anyone's going to remember the fact that it went down for 24 hours. Just like people don't remember things like that happening to uh, Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. I think Bitcoin has been down, I think, once, maybe twice. It wasn't for too long, but it has been down, and Ethereum has been down as well. Speaking of, so again, it wasn't just Solana that was down, so Ethereum has also evaded a malicious attack, and it wasn't just a malicious attack. But Arbitrum 1 also high, uh, highlighted that its network is still in beta and warned that further outages are possible in the early days. So Arbitrum 1 is reporting its sequencer had gone offline for roughly 45 minutes. So again, just remember with pretty much all these cryptocurrencies, bar Bitcoin, they are, they're not really a finished product. And again, as I said before, they will hopefully never really be a finished product because they should always be updating and things like that. You can't just have you know the one program as is. Even Bitcoin's updated uh, a number of times since its inception. But down here, uh, and if that wasn't enough drama for one day, an unknown entity also unsuccessfully sought to attack Ethereum with developer Marius van der uh, Widgeton, hopefully I said that, flagging the failed incident on Twitter. So there's all sorts of crazy things going on at the moment. And again, whether you know the Solana stuff simply was just bots trying to buy stuff up or people setting bots to try and crack it and make it fail, that really is kind of the big question. But again, so, you know, I did say that, you know, Solana was still very new uh, and problems could go wrong and now it did. But also Ethereum, uh, not that new and still because of the ETH 2.0 and things rolling out, even things can go wrong on there. So just remember to be careful in this crypto space. It's not, you know, you're just gonna put your money in and make millions of dollars many many things could happen and again these two setbacks for both Solana and Arbitrum doesn't mean that they're dead in the water not at all but they are things that can spook and scare the market and particularly investors if you're the one who's put your money into it all right Bank of Russia recommends banks to block cards wallets that use to transact with crypto exchanges that says exchangers I think they mean exchanges so, along with illegal forex dealers and financial pyramids, the regulator has also listed crypto exchanges as suspicious entities. I mean, they were doing that sort of here in Australia when you were trying to put money into your banks. Uh, they were sending you text messages and things like that for you to confirm that that's what you wanted to do because uh, the exchanges here in Australia were coming up as suspicious. Again, this is just the old finance, the old traditional system trying to slow down what's coming. They know it's coming. They can see it's coming and they just, they're not ready for it. They are trying to prep themselves. I won't go on that about that anymore though because I've already mentioned that. All right. So we obviously know that that fake Walmart Litecoin news came out the other day and there's a lot of people that are suspicious that maybe people uh, both longed and possibly shorted Litecoin uh, with this happening and maybe it was people just trying to get out of their Litecoin positions. There's a lot of rumours kind of going around but the Walmart Litecoin troll could face major criminal charges if busted. So Walmart Incorporated has launched their own investigation into it and they said they would be happy to work with the appropriate authorities to investigate the case because this is not good for Litecoin and it's not good for Walmart either for both sides because it was a, you know, well, it was fake. How else, you know, can you say it? It's got a complete rubbish uh, and just not true. And that doesn't help Walmart and it doesn't help Litecoin. So while it may, you know, we have to wonder whether was it done as someone just trying to be funny, as a bit of a gag, or was it done, again, with, you know, some ulterior motives again maybe people you know longed the litecoin price and then shorted it sort of all at the same time we'll have to wait and see but you know if it was done as just a joke i mean you know they could still face jail time for something that was just a joke so you you know people need to be careful in this space because again a lot of people maybe who were sitting on the computer at the time probably thought oh litecoin's you know gonna go to a million bucks or whatever i don't know about a million but anyway a lot more and jumped in and then you know may have got a little bit wrecked really all it did was jump from its price of 180 dollars up to 230 and went back to about 180 so you know not a major move but still people could have been affected by that 
So I did say yesterday or last night that the SEC uh, chairman, Gary Gensler, he was going before the Senate today. And it was pretty interesting. I didn't watch all of it. I've just watched uh, snippets of it. But he has come out and still said that he believes Coinbase has listed dozens of tokens that might be securities. So that is the problem. What was interesting is when Gary Gensler was speaking is he was basically saying that it's the definitions of what is a security now that came in from previous uh, people before him that he is having to work to those rules and that he even said to uh, the Senate that they could come out uh, and change the rules uh, and that might be something that, you know, could be the thing that will help us push forwards. And I did say that. I think, you know, we need to stop trying to make cryptocurrencies fit into old rules. We need to come up with a new set of rules for this new system. You know, again, it's like trying to fit a square into a circle. Uh, it just doesn't work. Why wouldn't you make something that would then fit the square or the other way around that wouldn't, you know, fit the circle rather than, you know, trying to fit something that obviously just doesn't fit. We're moving into a new paradigm of how, you know, finances will be, you know, moved around the world. Why try and, you know, fit this, again, brand new disruptive technology, and there's nothing wrong with disruptive. Disruptive can be good. Disruptive can be bad for the old, you know, system, but the new system its disruption could be really good. And we've already seen what crypto can do, you know. Getting rid of the middleman and not taking weeks and days for money to move around and all the rest of it. Now, don't get me wrong, we've still got lags, particularly on Ethereum at the moment. When it's really congested, it might take 45 minutes or even in a couple of hours for the money to get there. But that's still 10 times faster than the old system that we, we currently use. And, fingers crossed, Ethereum 2.0, once that's completely done, then you're talking, you know, again, depending on how many shards in that, but thousands of transactions per second it should be able to do. And again, no more of this, you know, money taking days, weeks and going through several banks and actual physical cash having to move its way around the world. It'll just be a, a digital system. I think that really is the future. Uh, I think most people can probably agree with that. It's just how they go about regulating it that seems to be the real issue. All right. So Ethereum's Infura releases tool to prevent overpayment of transaction fees. So a code change to Ethereum blockchain that was enacted last month, so EIP-1559, was designed to prevent people from paying more than they had uh, to in transaction costs, except it didn't always do that. Uh, not when the network was at peak uh, usage levels, thanks to an onslaught of bids for NFTs and DeFi swaps and things like that. But Infura a cloud-hosted node network that many projects use to connect to the Ethereum blockchain has launched a new tool meant to cover those instances not already covered by EIP-1559. Now, what was interesting is I moved some Ethereum around today and my first uh, Ethereum transaction, I think, was $30 and the next one was $60 and the next one was a whole lot less and the last one I did was $3 uh, and all similar kind of uh, payments, so it was very interesting to see the fluctuation in prices. And I did all these moves within, I don't know, probably an hour, even maybe even less, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, and again, yeah, the prices were all over the place. But look, they all happened fairly quickly. I think the longest transaction probably took five minutes if it was lucky. So, yeah. We just have to wait and see. You know, so many good things about all these projects. Again, Solana and, you know, Ethereum and you name it. But, yeah, they're not finished products. So, again, I like to tell people who are investing in cryptocurrencies and none of this is ever financial advice, just a personal opinion. Think of yourself like a VC. You're investing in early projects, even though they may be a couple of years old, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. But, again, not so much Bitcoin because that really is kind of a finished product other than a bit of scaling, at least at the moment, that may change in the future. But all the rest of them, they're still, yeah, you're buying into what you're hoping it will be, not what it actually is, because most of these aren't what they uh, want to be. They're still a ways off. Coinbase, they have raised another $2 billion uh, increasing their junk bonds. And look, investors are swarming all over it. It goes down here to say at least $7 billion worth of orders were placed in competition uh, 
yeah, competition for equal quantities of seven and ten year bonds, offering interest rates of three point three percent and three point two, three point six. Uh, three point three seven five percent, sorry, and three point six two five percent, respectively. So people are jumping all over these because you get bonds from uh, anywhere else; they're paying a whole lot less, and you put your money in a bank. I mean, they're paying less than a percent. So three percent is pretty low in the kind of crypto space. You can get a whole lot more uh, depending on what you've got and depending on where you're putting it. But again, people are all over this. So it says that people aren't too shook by the coin ba- Coinbase fud. And everything that's going on with regulatory issues and things like that people are still happy to put their money in and a three it makes me laugh a 3.375 percent and a 3.265 percent are interest rate return when i was young i remember there were interest you could get interest of you know seven or eight percent this is when i was really young like you know when i was probably i don't know maybe 10 15 years old or something like that i can remember them having interest rates like that and then you look at them now the banks they can't even offer you one percent maybe there's some special uh certain bank account you know thing that they have where it might offer you sort of one percent but most of them uh, in australia here are 0.02 something percent so less than a percent interest is what you can earn on your money it's such a crazy space and a crazy time that we really are in but for me I'm just holding tight. I believe in this space. I believe regulation will come. It won't be the best regulation that we could have ever hoped for. Things are rarely ever like that. It won't be the worst regulation that we're all thinking of either. It is going to be somewhere in between. And again, I don't think, you know, any smart countries like America or, you know, the big nations are going to try and crush the crypto industry because they can all see the writing on the wall. Again, I won't... I won't take up too much more of your time with that. I tend to harp on a little bit about that because I am passionate about the space and I just don't want people to get shaken out. You know, if you're going to get shaken out, be shaken out because it's of your belief, not because of, you know, the FUD that sometimes gets, you know, put in the news and that and all the regulatory stuff. There's things like that going on all the time in every single industry. This is not just a crypto thing. Even in the banking industry, they're changing, you know, processes every now and then and people get up in arms and people get worried about stuff and you know the banking sector up until now has generally worked it hasn't been great and it hasn't been fair but it's generally worked and it'll be no different for the crypto space it will get fixed it will get sorted and the people who got in early and made some smart decisions and put some money in the right places i truly believe they will be well rewarded in the future it's just not going to happen overnight don't expect that Solana things where you put in a thousand dollars, you know, nine months, a thousand dollars in, and nine months later you got over a hundred thousand dollars. It can happen. That's an example of it, but it doesn't just simply happen like that. And particularly the later we get in this cycle, if the four-year cycle thing is sort of to play out, the less likely that is uh, going to occur. But not impossible. That's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.